Hello, it is so nice to see you again. Do you remember last week we talked about how David was anointed king, right? He was just a little kid and King Saul had been a bad king, had done naughty stuff. And God decided to take the kingdom away from Saul and to give it to David. And Solomon, or Samuel came and anointed David and he was going to be the king. And I said that God opened the doors for David so he would learn to be a warrior. He'd learn to be a soldier. He'd learn to be a king. He'd learn to be a leader. And that all happened. So David grew up and he became a powerful king and a mighty warrior. He would lead the armies of Israel against all of their enemies and God gave him great victories. We're going to talk about many of those stories another time. David also made some pretty big mistakes and he learned a lot about God's heart and a lot about God's mercy. But God redeemed him and rescued him and brought him back onto the right path. And David lived out his life as a king. So when David died, his son Solomon became king. And there's stories there too, of course. But just for today, it's enough that you know that David was king and then his son Solomon became king. Now, when Solomon became king, he wanted to finish something that his dad had always wanted to do. King David had always wanted to build a temple for the Lord, for God. David thought it was wrong that he lived in a palace and the Ark of the Covenant, you know, this box that has the Ten Commandments in it and the presence of God is connected to it, that still was living in a tent. And David said, that's not right. I want to build a beautiful building as a temple, as a church for the Ark of the Covenant and for the presence of God. And God said to him, David, nice idea. No, you're a man of war. Your hands have spilled a lot of blood. I don't want you to build my church. We'll let your son build my church. And David wasn't thrilled about that. But of course, if God says this is how it's going to be, well, then that's how it's going to be. So David didn't build the temple, but he started collecting stuff. He made plans and he had architects do drawings and take measurements. And he started putting together gold and precious stones and precious cloth, everything that would be needed to build this temple. So when Solomon became king, he pulled out his dad's plans. He got all of the stuff that David had put together and he decided that he was going to build this beautiful building to honor God, this beautiful building that would be the home of the Ark of the Covenant, this beautiful building which would be a, a central part of Israel's remembering who God was, where they could go and they could pray and they could ask for forgiveness and know that God heard their prayers. So he went to work. One of the first things he did is he contacted a king that had a kingdom just north of Israel. And in this kingdom, it was part of Lebanon, kingdom of Tyre, it was called, uh, part of Lebanon, uh, they had beautiful trees, cedar trees, just gorgeous, covering the hills and the mountains. And Solomon sent a letter saying, could I have some of those trees? I'll pay you for them. And my servants can come help cut them down. The other king was just thrilled to have this message from Solomon. He lived in peace with David and he wanted peace with Solomon. And he said, of course you can have some of my trees. I'll have my servants cut them down. You can pay us with food. So that was the deal. And the two kings, they set a treaty with each other. They made friends with each other. It was very, very good. At the same time, Solomon sent a bunch of guys out to quarries. You know what those are, right? The big pits in the ground where you mine rock. And so he had guys out there cutting stone for the temple. And because the plans were so perfect, they did all of the cutting and all of the fitting of the stone at the quarry. And only when the stones were perfect, only when they were polished, did they get brought to Jerusalem. So we had thousands of guys working on this temple to the Lord. Thousands of people collecting and building and polishing and cutting and sawing and just this is unbelievable amount of work. It took seven years, seven years. But after seven years, they, the people of God and Solomon, had built a gorgeous house to the glory of God. 
covered inside and out with dressed stone and finely finished cedar with gold accents and gold coverings everywhere. An enormous altar made out of brass. Just a beautiful temple for places for God's people to gather and to pray and to learn and places for people who weren't part of God's family to come closer and to learn. It was a beautiful thing. And Solomon called people from all over the country and they came and they offered sacrifices and they said prayers and the presence of God came down in the form of a cloud and filled the whole building as a sign that God accepted Solomon's work and the people's prayers and that God would be with his people forever. And then Solomon had a, a little meeting with God that God said to Solomon, you know, if you and your children and their children do what they're supposed to do, do what I tell them to do, it's going to be good. It's going to be good forever. But I do want you to know that if you and your children forget to do what's right, if you forget about me, if you don't honor me, then I'm going to walk away from this house. I'm going to let it go. I'm still going to do my will in the world. I still have a big plan in the world. but. I'm going to walk away from this house and I'm going to let your enemies conquer you and this house. So do what you're supposed to do. And Solomon said, yep, 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 of course, of course, I'll do what I'm supposed to do. And for a while he did. And then he didn't. And God always keeps God's promises. And so there were consequences. But that's a story for another day. Today, I want you to remember that Solomon finished his dad's work. Solomon built a house for the Lord that God wants us to know that he's with us, that God cares about you and how you act, and that as you and I honor God, God is always loving us, caring for us, protecting us and helping us. There's lots of parts of this that you could draw. You could draw the men on the mountainside cutting the cedars. You could draw the people working in the quarry cutting the stones. You could have pictures of people dragging all this beautiful stuff to Jerusalem or the people assembling the temple. You could have this cloud of God's glory filling the temple and spilling out of all the doors and the windows. You'll know what to draw. And I will love putting it up on our website. I'm proud of you. I hope you're doing well. It's nice to talk to you again. Thanks for the time. Bye-bye.